Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So Tom Perez, come on down. You are the next contestant. So Tom, I've had several videos that you've been featured in. Not necessarily come on down, but in other videos. You know at this point that I don't particularly like you very much. But look, you can understand why. You're somewhat of a dislikable guy. Um, anything from the contradiction of being a labor secretary and yet trying to pass a Trans-Pacific Partnership that would have gutted labor? You know, contradictions, that things that would actually hurt people that you're supposed to be there protecting. So, to this already low level to which I regard you, you did something that I didn't think was possible. You've fallen even lower in my regard. Common Dreams comes out with an article today. Labor Secretary advised Clinton to cast Sanders as candidate of whites to turn off minorities. I hope you're proud of yourself, Tom. Like, look, guys, I, I've made this case multiple times before that the reason the, reason the Democratic Party lost this much was because they cheated. They were being underhanded. Um, and they were absolutely out of touch, meaning they could not come up with a positive narrative for themselves, even in the primary. Meaning that Hillary Clinton, in the same way that she couldn't come up with a positive narrative to take down Donald Trump, she couldn't do it with Sanders either. So they did stupid stuff like this, tarring the man, trying to call, act like he's racist or something. One candidate, when he was a kid, was chained to a black woman. The other one was not. Um, boy, the other one, the whole super predator thing. Good job, Tom. I mean, look, you succeeded in what you're trying to do. I mean, this is what you envision, right? You tackle your strongest candidate. You tar him, call him a socialist. Say he's crazy, he's loony, he's the candidate of the whites. Good job, good job. How many people left the Democratic Party? What, 10 million? Wow, that's a lot of people. But hey, you got past Bernie, and now you have Donald Trump. And now, to all of this calamity, now you want to take on the DNC. All right. The Vice was sent an email to Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta, which was published as part of a third batch of emails released by WikiLeaks. Nevada is an opportunity to fight back on so many levels, Perez argued. First, the current storyline is that she does not connect well with young voters. Given that Nevada is far more demographically representative of America, I'm confident that Hillary Clinton can do well with African Americans, Latinos, and Asians. Don't forget the sizable population of Asians in Nevada including Filipinos. Perez continued, Emma and the team, Emmy and the team, have a good plan of attack to attract all minority voters. When we do well there, then the narrative changes from Bernie kicks ass among young voters to Bernie does well only among white liberals. That's a different story and a perfect lead to South Carolina. But once again, we can work to attract young voters of color. I think Nevada is a real opportunity and I would strongly urge Hillary Clinton to get out there within a couple of days in New Hampshire. You don't see how gross that is? Like, really. I mean, it, this is disgusting on so many levels. You have one candidate who was actually running because he wanted to do something positive. Something good. He was actually being noble. And for a politician, that is absolutely rare. And because she was so shallow, she was so flawed and weak, she had nothing to run on. And so you decided that you wanted to essentially racially smear him. The guy who was chained to a black woman in the South. That's the guy you're going to racially smear. In order to help your loser of a candidate exceed the primaries. Good job, Perez. Good fucking job. 
Regardless, the Clinton campaign relied on weaponization of identity and politics of division to cast Sanders as a campaign for angry white people. It had an impact, of course, about Sanders. It had an impact on discourse about the Sanders campaign and influenced supporters like Salon's Amanda Marquette, who played a big role in election folklore around quote unquote Bernie Bros. Um, she wrote in March, the Democratic case that their party is a party for everyone is undermined if the people we have traditionally held power in our society for most of its history, white men, continue to control the direction of the party. Sanders would probably win white women and people of color in general, but they would be voting for a candidate that white men had picked. I, I really hope you know how gross this is. So, yeah man, this is so fucking gross. I, this is one of those things where Republicans are right on. At the very least, they're right on this specific point. And look, Republicans are not above it either. They use race just as much as you guys do. But this is so fucking gross. You guys are tarring somebody with race. Not because of for any particular real reason, but because you had no ability to compete with the guy on anything substantial. And so the people who you got to vote for you, the people who you were going to hurt when you were in office, that guy was actually going to help. Now, I don't know what Tom Perez's racial distinction is. I'm imagining it's Hispanic if the last name is Perez. But that makes it that much more gross. Because, look, and I, I, I said the same thing about Obama. Race is a political tool for them. Like, when you're interacting with people for the most part, those people are just being themselves. In politics, they use any and everything at their disposal, including their race, their gender, whatever. Obama is a corporation. He uses blackness as a political artifact. That's it. I mean, it, when people look at him, they think, oh, we have change because he's black. He doesn't necessarily have to represent real change because on the outside, he's so distinctly different from everybody else. He can give the appearance of change without actually changing anything. There's something gross about somebody who sees the world from a perspective of a minority and devises ways of minorities to essentially devise ways to tar people so the minorities wouldn't necessarily go to a particular candidate, even though that candidate is in their best interest. You're absolutely disgusting. This, you know what's so bad about this? So I said several times before. During this election, Democrats were doing things, excuse me, Democrats were doing things that Republicans used to do. Like some of the dirty tricks, they were bread and butter. So for, I'll give you an example. For the longest time, I had only really heard of um, voter stuff going on with Republicans. Whether it's throwing people off the rolls, whether it's um, you know, somebody showing up and their identity is no longer there, whether it's shutting down polls in certain locations, um, to create a disadvantage and longer lines for other people, your opponents. Democrats were doing that. You know, and I, I realized, like, I realized early on that Republicans, for the most part, ran out of ideas. And when they ran out of ideas, they needed a way to convince people to vote against their self-interest. So they used other issues, identity being one of those issues, to say, hey, look, we're going to screw you over, but at the very least, we're going to accept whatever batshit crazy religion or whatever batshit crazy idea that you have. We got you. We don't even need you to believe in science. You can say, fuck reality. You'll be okay. And they can harness those people and get a, you know, a voting majority. Democrats, at one point, at the very least, when you were in opposition, you had ideas. The problem is when you got in office, we realized those ideas was just purely for opposition's sake. They weren't real. Um, and this is kind of where we are now with you. Like, so instead of having ideas, your only capacity was to tar the other guy. You've essentially reached the point that Republicans have reached. Do you know how empty that is? Like, you are literally trailing behind a party that has ran off the political spectrum. And you're close enough behind it where the tactics that they were using in order to stay in power, you yourself had to use to stay in power. 
So for you, yeah, we can't beat Bernie in a debate, so let's put these debates at times that nobody's going to see him. No, we can't necessarily beat Bernie in open um, elections. So yeah, let's make all of these places. Let's shut the polling locations. Let's throw 100,000 people off the rolls in Brooklyn. What are they going to do? If they say they're cheating, just say they're being sore losers. Yeah, this angers me. Um, this angers me greatly. This is the Southern strategy used within the Democratic Party. The Southern strategy was a technique um, that Republicans use. Again, I make this point. They're, they're just following the Republicans' footsteps. Um, that Republicans use in order to gin up white resentment against African Americans. Um, they would do it as using like buzzwords like forced busing and everything else. They were able to foment that based upon the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Act. Democrats are doing it in an opposite way. They're essentially saying, hey, look, all those white people are voting for Sanders. And I know you remember this. Then I kept thinking to myself, whites make up like almost 70% of the population. You're, the logic doesn't make sense. But one state run media after another ran those stories. Sanders won like Hawaii or something, or Washington. Both of those were the most diverse states in this country. And yet media ran that line, because for the most part they were colluding with Hillary Clinton. Part of the reason they're attacking Trump like this now is because they wanted their dear leader Hillary Clinton. Tom Perez, you're disgusting. You may win the seat, and in fact, I actually hope you do get the DNC chair, because I want your party to implode. You do not need to exist. I would never vote for another Democrat again. Ever. I don't care if it's just as Democrats or anybody else. You guys are absolutely defunct. Go away. Go the fuck away. Thanks, guys.